The story begins with a woman called Lydia Ditz hosting a paranormal show known as The Ghost House. This is Elliot and Jolie from Wisconsin who have joined the show to share their paranormal experiences with everyone. She plays a video clip of her encounter with the ghost inside that haunted house in Wisconsin and this is exactly when she gets a deja vu of a man named Beetlejuice. This is Rory, he is the boyfriend of Lydia Ditz. He immediately runs to the stage to comfort Lydia and they decide to cancel the show for the time being. She runs to the washroom to take an antidepressant and this is exactly when her boyfriend Rory enters the washroom to talk to her. When he was encouraging Lydia, he suddenly hears the sound of something dropping on the basin. He gets to find out that Lydia is still taking antidepressants. He opens the cap and throws the pills into the dump. But Lydia begins to explain to her boyfriend that she cannot live without those pills. After a lot of requesting, he decides to take back the pills and tells Lydia that he will stand beside her no matter what happens. But the couple had no idea that this was only the beginning of a dark chapter in their life. She gets a lot of text messages from her mother and goes to see her at their family arts gallery. This is Delia Ditz, the stepmother of Lydia. She gets to find out from her stepmom that her biological father Mr. Charles Ditz has passed away after a plane crash into the Pacific Ocean. The movie uses animation to explain that Charles was going to an island for a bird watching expedition and on his way to the island, one of the engines failed due to some birds flying into the turbine chamber and it directly crashes into the Pacific Ocean. Fortunately, he survived the crash but unfortunately a bull shark bites half of his body back into the ocean. When they were talking about the incident, Delia's assistant Picasso gets infuriated about the fact that the show has been cancelled for which they have lost a lot of money and reputation. He goes outside while being on the phone and falls into a manhole and after that he discovers himself in the afterlife with a huge bump on his forehead. He was in shock to find himself in a place like this. He sees a janitor over there and the man tells him to go to the waiting lounge for finding more info about the afterlife section. The janitor then goes to the hardware compartment and drinks some phenyl. He then goes to the lost and found section to clean the place and this is when he gets an electric shock from the wet floor. Some boxes fall on the ground after that incident and this is when some separated parts of a human body begin to gather itself. The woman staples each and every part of her body very carefully. The name of the woman is Dolores. She belongs to a satanic cult that lives and thrives on the souls of human beings. She walks to the janitor and asks him where she can find a man named Beetlejuice. When the janitor fails to answer that question, she absorbs the soul of that man and walks away from that place. This is Astrid, the daughter of Lydia Ditz. Everyone in the class makes fun of this girl due to the spooky background of her mother's career. When she was feeling sad and bullied after the recent event, she was looking at the picture of her biological father. His name is Richard, who died in a boat crash while fishing in the river. Delia, who is the grandmother of Astrid, comes to tell her at the boarding school that her mother Lydia is very upset about the fact that she was not receiving any phone call from her mother. She then tells Astrid that her grandfather Charles has recently passed away. Lydia then convinces Astrid to join them in a grandpa's funeral back in Winter River, Connecticut. When Lydia was talking to Astrid, she suddenly gets another deja vu of Beetlejuice out of nowhere. This is Beetlejuice. He is a dead man living in the afternoon life section. There was a time in the past when he was in love with Lydia Ditz when she used to live in a haunted house in Winter River, Connecticut. This is Bob. He is the personal assistant of Beetlejuice. He runs an afterlife call center to provide service to the human souls. This is Wolf Jackson. He used to be a Hollywood actor in the spy thriller genre like James Bond but he died due to an explosion on the film set. He now runs a detective office with the help of some deceased police officers. This is Janet, the personal assistant of Wolf Jackson who died from a bullet into her chest. Jackson calls Beetlejuice into his office and shows a picture of Dolores interrogating if he knows this woman or not. He panics at first to see that picture and then he says that he has never seen that woman ever in his life. Dolores wrote that thing on the wall about Beetlejuice before leaving the lost and found section. The Deeds family on the other hand have come back to Connecticut to arrange the funeral for Charles. Astrid still couldn't get over the fact that she lost her biological father and she believes that Lydia is responsible responsible for the entire incident. This is another reason why she hates her mom so much. Beetlejuice is now stressed over the fact that Dolores is still alive and she is now looking for revenge. He begins to speak in Italian and tells the story of his past with Dolores to everyone in the office. A couple hundred years ago, he used to be a humble grave robber during the Black Plague and this is when he gets to meet Dolores. Enchanted by her beauty, he falls in lust with that woman. They sacrifice some goats and drink the blood of each other before getting 
getting married. At the wedding night, they enjoy the pleasure of flesh to the fullest of their desire. Dolores pours a glass of wine for Beetlejuice and within a minute, he gets to find out that he has been poisoned by this woman so that she can devour his soul. But he continues to tell everyone that he actually managed to slice that woman into little pieces before dying of that poison. On the other hand, Astrid inside the home was having some food and this is when Rory comes to have a conversation with her. He tells Astrid that he will do anything and everything to make sure that she is always happy with her family and he promises Astrid that he will make a good stepfather. But she tells Rory that she will never accept him as a stepfather. Out of insecurity, Rory goes outside and declares in front of everybody that he is in love with Lydia and proposes her to marry him. Lydia was completely in shock after the proposal but she says yes after a lot of hesitation. Not being able to handle this family drama, Astrid takes out her bicycle and leaves the home at an instant. When she was roaming around the city, she suddenly gets distracted, loses control of her bike and crashes onto a tree near someone's home. She gets to meet a boy named Jeremy over there. She slowly begins to like the company of that boy. Beetlejuice gets to find out from the afterlife newspaper that the Deeds family have come back to their old haunted house. Astrid on the other hand goes to the attic of their house. She finds the model town design of their neighborhood and also a leaflet of Beetlejuice. She finds out a couple of pictures of Richard, her biological father and this is when Lydia also joins her in the memory recap. She suddenly notices that leaflet and Astrid takes the name of Beetlejuice once to explain what she saw written on that paper. She takes the name of Beetlejuice one more time and her mom yells at her saying that she cannot say that name three times in a row. Otherwise, this man will be able to come to the real world from the afterlife section. She tells Astrid to stay away from the attic and pushes her out of that place. Driven by anger, Astrid gets out of the home and runs to the house of Jeremy. He introduces his mom and dad on his way to the upstairs. She gets her hands on a book called Handbook for the Recently Deceased which provides detailed information about the afterlife do's and don'ts. But Astrid didn't seem to be very interested in this book. They begin to talk about each other's family, their personal likes and dislikes, their future goals and some other personal things. In the meanwhile, Lydia was making her wedding plans with Rory and this is when she receives a lot of text messages from Beetlejuice. She runs to the attic to warn Beetlejuice and she gets followed by Rory from the back. She then reveals to Rory that her father bought this house when she was a kid and there was a demon named Beetlejuice who managed to come to the real world from the afterlife. He then forced Lydia into marrying him in exchange of keeping her family members alive. But in the end, she managed to get rid of this evil with the help of two good-spirited ghosts named Adam and Barbara. Rory, on the other hand, was not taking that story seriously at all. So he says the name Beetlejuice three times in a row to see what really happens. Surprisingly, they end up being inside that model town in the afterlife section in front of a couple's therapist chamber. They go inside the chamber and discover Beetlejuice over there. He zips the mouth of Lydia before she proceeded to say something and begins to frighten them using a lot of disgusting tricks. He makes Lydia pregnant with the Beetlejuice baby and then the baby starts biting Lydia on the leg. She then somehow manages to unzip her mouth and says home three times in a row which teleports her back to their house along with Rory. On the other hand, Delia has ordered two snakes with no venom to use them for a special ritual to communicate with the soul of her deceased husband. This is when Lydia comes to tell her mom about everything that has recently happened. Understanding the gravity of the situation, she locks the door of the attic and tells Lydia to never even come close to this place again. At night, Lydia drops Astrid near the house of her boyfriend. When she was feeling a bit comfortable with Jeremy, she suddenly discovers that they both had been levitating since a while. She gets to find out that Jeremy is not alive anymore. He passed away 23 years ago, breaking his neck after slipping from the tree house. Astrid gets frightened and disappointed to hear that and when she was about to leave, Jeremy keeps begging her not to leave the house. He tells Astrid that he can get his life back if she decides to help him out. She finally gets convinced to help him after finding out that she can also see her father in the afterlife section. On the other hand, when Lydia was making her wedding plan with the local real estate agent, she gets to find out that the house where she dropped Astrid is actually a ghost house. A boy named Jeremy murdered his parents 23 years ago and when the cops chased him, he fell on the ground and broke his neck. After hearing that, she runs from the house to save Astrid. Jeremy, on the other hand, has sketched a door on the wall with a chalk stick and knocks on the door three times in a row. Lydia pulls in front of their home, gets inside and discovers the dead souls of Jeremy's mom and dad. Astrid has already got into the afterlife section and she finds a lot of dead souls waiting for their serial numbers to be called for. Delia in the meanwhile was doing a ritual to communicate with the soul
soul of her husband and she dies after getting bitten by the snakes in her hand. Those snakes were actually venomous although the salesman claimed that the snakes had no venom. Lydia on the other hand has come to the attic again to make a deal with Beetlejuice for saving her daughter. She calls the name of Beetlejuice three times in a row and when he comes to the real world, he offers to save Astrid provided that Lydia has to marry him permanently. And then he makes a grenade on the wall, fires his finger up to blow into the afterlife section. Wolf Jackson on the other hand is gearing up with his police officers after finding out that Beetlejuice has brought an alive person into the afterlife section which is completely illegal. He briefs his officer that they have to arrest Beetlejuice as fast as possible and send that woman back to the real world. Delia wakes up in the afterlife and she finds it difficult to accept her new reality. Astrid on the other hand gets to find out that she has been betrayed by Jeremy. He actually has brought Astrid to swap her life to get his own life back. Which means Astrid will have to die to give Jeremy a new life. Dolores in the meanwhile is still looking for Beetlejuice in the afterlife section. She finds a photo frame of Beetlejuice and licks the picture. She finds another photo of young Lydia and breaks it onto the floor out of jealousy. They take Astrid to the train of souls where her life will be sacrificed. Lydia finally finds Astrid and rescues her from the train. They go through the emergency exit door and fall into the void. All of a sudden they encounter a sandworm but fortunately Astrid's father Richard reaches over there for the rescue. She gets very delighted to see her father again after so many years. They all get to the afterlife counter section and find Jeremy over there. Fortunately, Beetlejuice was sitting at the counter and due to his deal with Lydia, he sends Jeremy to hell instead. Richard then says goodbye to his wife and daughter and helps them to get back to the real world. Rory was waiting for Lydia inside the church and after their reaching over there, they make arrangements for the marriage. Beetlejuice then appears in the marriage out of nowhere along with Delia. He injects a truth serum into the neck of Rory and he he begins to tell the truth behind his relationship with Lydia. He reveals that the biggest reason why he wanted to marry Lydia was because of his money, fame and properties. Beetlejuice gives Lydia a punching glove and she knocks the wind out of him. After that, he puts all the people inside their mobile phones for having some privacy. He forces Father Damien into witnessing the marriage. He adorns Lydia with a red gown and they dance together. He also makes all the witnesses sing and dance to the tone of their music. Wolf Jackson on the other hand was closing in to the church to arrest Beetlejuice. They break into the church and tell Beetlejuice to freeze but he gets frozen instead as well as the entire enforcement team. This is when Dolores crashes into the wedding party. She now wants to absorb the soul of Beetlejuice to take a revenge. But Beetlejuice says that she can devour the soul of Rory instead. Astrid in the meanwhile reads the manual from the book of the recently deceased and invites the sandworm into the real world. The sandworm then devours Dolores and Rory into the void. Astrid then tells Beetlejuice that he has violated rule number 699 by bringing an alive person into the afterlife section. And so the contract is no more valid. He then begins to inflate in the air after Lydia said his name three times in a row and he pops like a balloon within a few seconds. Wolf Jackson and his team get back to normal again. They claim Delia to go back to the afterlife section as the woman is now dead. They say goodbye to Delia and she gets to reunite with her deceased husband Charles in the afterlife. Lydia decides to retire from her career and finally spend some time with their daughter Astrid. This girl falls in love with a boy named Vlad and they happily get married. A couple years later, she surprisingly gives birth to a Beetlejuice baby and it begins to eat everyone in the operation theater. Fortunately, Lydia wakes up from sleep only to realize that everything she experienced was only a bad dream. And that is pretty much the end of the story. I hope to see you soon with a new recap. Until then, take care and bye bye.